Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you to this online service of worship for Riverside United Church for June 28th, 2020. My name is Dave Exley. I'm the lead minister for Riverside. And wherever you might find this video worship service here, I hope that you are filled this day with a sense of love, joy, and peace. We're certainly living in uncertain times in the midst of this pandemic. And so our thoughts are with you and hope these songs of faith, these words of faith will encourage you and give you strength and courage for the road ahead. We're uncertain about what that road might look like, but we're confident that God will lead us down that path. And when we journey together, that we will find hope, that we will find meaning. And so let us open this worship service uh, in song. Let us worship God together. Things will 
Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's a very short passage from chapter 10. I'm thankful for Isabel Frazier for reading this passage for us. And so let us listen for God's word as we open this holy text. Our scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 10 from the Common English Bible. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. It was about a year ago that I was on a solo canoe trip through beautiful Algonquin Park here in Ontario. And while on a very challenging three kilometer portage, I found myself in a very difficult spot. I was running low on water, and to make matters worse, it was a very warm day. And so here I was, one hour into the trip from one lake to the next, where I found myself exhausted and absolutely parched, with sadly only a few sips of water left in my Nalgene bottle. As I moved down the trail, I was hoping for some divine intervention, and it came to my surprise. There was this divine voice that spoke to me. It was the sound of a small creek running under the footbridge just a few meters in front of me. And so I moved quickly to that bridge, set my canoe and my gear on the side of the trail, grabbed my water filter out of my pack, and raced down to that small water source to fill up, fill up my bottle as best I could. It was one of those moments where I realized what a difference even a small, cool cup of water can make when it comes to our living. Now, truth be told, it was certainly a moment of privilege for me. I've never really known what it means to to hunger and thirst like so many others have in our world. But in that moment, both my body and the earth spoke with great clarity to me about our human needs. Now, this passage from Matthew's gospel is about water, but it's also about hospitality and discipleship. It's a passage that teaches us a great deal about who God is and what the way of Christ has to say about our connection to one another. But the image of that cool cup of water, particularly when it's placed in the right context, can offer us a great deal as it relates to following in the way of Jesus. Now, in this passage, there are three things that that emerge for me as as highlights as we think about what it means to follow in the way of Jesus. The first is, in this passage, we learn about the rewards of following Jesus, what it means to share in God's way of grace and love. And the second thing is, we're reminded through this passage that God doesn't require more than we can offer. Even something as simple as a cool cup of water is enough. And the third thing is that in this passage, Jesus reminds us of our interconnectedness within this world. So with that in mind, those three things in mind, let's take a look first at what Jesus has to say about the rewards of following in God's way of grace and love. Well, in this short two-verse passage from Matthew 10, we hear this repetitive word, this invitation that Jesus makes to his followers The Common English Bible translates that particular word as receive, while other translations read welcome. Whatever word you choose to use for this passage, it's clear that the key to what Jesus is saying is to be found in that word. He says, those who receive you also receive me, and those who receive me are also receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward And those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. Eight times Jesus uses this word in this passage. Now, I do like that the Common English Bible translates it to receive rather than welcome. I think we tend to overuse the word welcome in the context of the church to the point at which I think it's lost some of its meaning. Welcome, in my mind, seems more like something that we do to another person. It's an action that seems limited in our current day context. 
For to receive someone, in my view, means that we must do something different. We must open ourselves to transformation. A part of that person becomes a part of us. We make space for them to enter in and forever change who we are. The word that Jesus uses and the way he addresses his followers gives us a, a glimpse of what it means to be a follower in the way. While most of the world is wired to look for a strict quid pro quo in each and every transaction, following in the way of Jesus aims to shed that need, to see one another in only transactional ways. As human beings, our fatal flaw is that we tend to, to think small and Fears drives us to that place where we worry about the earth's resources, thinking that there is only enough for so many. We see ourselves in competition with one another, and so we naturally see every human interaction as one where we must calculate the cost of giving our time, giving our resources, giving of ourselves. That person is worthy of my time because they may help me get the promotion. I should do that volunteer work because it will look good on the resume. Receiving others, welcoming them, becomes a transaction in our world that, that we calculate based on the other person's value to us rather than their value to God. Jesus says, those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. Now let's be clear, Jesus isn't saying that this work involves great personal rewards. His followers knew that the rewards of a prophet are anything but desirable. In fact, look no further than how John the Baptist, a prophet of their time, was rewarded for his devotion to God. Embracing the way of Christ means that we must see beyond ourselves. We seek that which is for the greater good. We set aside the need for personal rewards in an effort to commit ourselves to something greater than ourselves. The second thing that we need to learn from this passage is that God doesn't require more than we can offer. Even something as insignificant, something as simple as a cool cup of water is enough. Why does Jesus use this image when talking about the nature of God's work and the value of this small, seemingly insignificant thing. Well, the gesture of sharing a, a cup of cold water with a stranger would have been a common image used in first century Palestine in the ancient Near East. As one scholar observes, a, a cup of cold water might be all that a peasant could offer, but hospitality given in faith to a prophet who requested it would be rewarded. Although one should ideally offer food if one could, everyone would have understood the significance of water as a sign of hospitality to a weary traveler. It appears even in pagan myths. In fact, during this time, a prominent Roman historian was on record for ridiculing an emperor for rewarding a man for something as insignificant as a cup of cool water. Well, Jesus rejects that notion and suggests that even those things that appear insignificant in the eyes of many is not insignificant in God's eyes. One small cup of water is enough in the eyes of God. And so when our well run dries as a result of things that are beyond our control, when all we have to offer is a measly cup of water due to our limited time and resources, God smiles and tells us that even that is enough. Well, finally, in this two-verse passage, it reminds us that, that perhaps the most important thing that we need to see in order to participate in God's realm of grace and love, to live in fulfillment of God's dream for the world, is to see the connection that we share with one another. Jesus reminds us that of that connection that we share with one another and with all creation. And so in sending out the disciples, Jesus reminds them that they are forever connected to him, when someone offers them a cup of water, when someone receives them, it's as if they are receiving and sharing that cup of water with Christ, receiving the Holy One and in fact, receiving God. He is one with them. There is oneness that all creation shares with God. There's no difference between the needs of my neighbor and the needs of God. 
Likewise, there's no difference between a stranger's need and, and my need. To put that into to a modern day context, a few years ago, I remember going to the emergency room to respond to an urgent personal health care need. My daughters were still young at the time, so I went alone while Betsy stayed at home with the girls. Now, I suppose like many of you, I suspect, when I'm not well, I have a hard time focusing on anyone but myself. And as an introvert, I'm not naturally inclined to, to strike up conversations with strangers, particularly in settings like the ER. But on this particular night, I found myself sitting next to another patient who turned out to be suicidal. Now, I had very little to offer that night. I was tired. I was sick. I was weary. It was as if I, it was as if in that moment, all I had to offer was a small, cool cup of water. That night I was like that small, seemingly insignificant creek that I encountered in Algonquin. But what I had was just enough, I think. <laughs> as we spoke, I, I realized that I had nothing but the, the air in my lungs to offer this other person who was struggling to breathe in this life. And so I offered what little I had, not expecting anything in return. Now, I don't know what happened in the days that followed that night, but I truly believe that what I offered that night was given in service of God and, and perhaps was enough. As Christ throughout my life has breathed life into my lungs and filled me up in those desperate moments in my life, likewise, I did what I could to, to offer my breath to someone who needed it. Well, let me close with these words from a, a very wise Canadian. In one of his recent publications, author Humble the Poet wrote these words that connect so well with this passage today. He writes, Let's talk about the thirst. The thirst can be for money, attention, knowledge, respect, validation, or whatever else. Often, going after the things we want is similar to climbing mountains without peaks. How do we determine how much is enough? How much money is enough money? How much attention is enough? How many Instagram followers are enough? Anything can be measured. Also means it can be compared. And sometimes we're, uh, we're motivated to want more because we're comparing ourselves to others. The point I want to get at is that these questions can be infinite and the answers we find won't be very satisfying. If we can take this route of continually just trying to accumulate more things, we may get lost in the process. And so today we ponder those things that will truly quench our thirst, those things that will fill us up and sustain us in this world of abundance, a world that we treat as a world of scarcity. So we're reminded this day that you have enough, that you are enough. When we receive one another, God's dream is fulfilled. When others receive us, God's realm becomes reality. And so let us be to each other as that small running stream of water that offers just enough for those first thirsty friends and strangers that we encounter on the path of life. Amen. Friends, we move into this time of prayer now, and so I invite you to, to join your hearts in prayer with all creation as we lift up these words of prayer to God.
the shape of your scars And you've got more wounds than you can count Open your eyes, look all around You aren't alone, this is your home Come and remember who you are here Do this to remember who I am Friends, this concludes our service of worship uh, for today. If you've been inspired by these words, I would encourage you to go on to our website, to riverside.on.ca. You can scroll down and hit the Give Online button to help support our ministry, to ensure that we're able to offer help and hope to so many for years to come. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel below and, uh, and hit the Like button here uh, to let us know that you've been inspired by these words of hope. But as you go from this place, as we depart from this time of online worship together, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of God's Spirit. Be blessed this day, my friends. Amen. When you go from this place, May the blessing of life find you. May the winds of the Spirit guide you across the ocean of all your days. May the seeds of your love, your life, adorn the way. When you go from this place, be true. May the blessing of life find you. May the winds of the Spirit guide you.
across the ocean of all your days. May the seeds of your love, your life, adorn the way. Adorn.